Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up VPC peering between two VPCs. I've got those set up here in my account in the console, but before we dive into a demo, let me spend just a minute talking about some concepts and what we're going to do. VPC peering is just what it sounds like. You've got two VPCs, say A and B, and you peer or connect them together to make them behave as a single network. So instances in A can talk to instances in B and vice versa, just as if they were in a single VPC together. You might want to do this so that instances in different regions can communicate with each other or even peer across AWS accounts. For terminology, this connection here is called the peering connection. This lets you connect two and only two VPCs. If you have more than two, you'll have to create a peering connection between each pair. You can't daisy chain them together or route through them. In other words, if I have three VPCs, A, B, and C, I have a connection between A and B, and then a connection between B and C. C is not connected to A through B. That's called transitive routing, and that's not allowed with VPC peering. You'd have to do a separate direct peering connection between A and C. The other caveat is that your VPCs can't have overlapping CIDR ranges. That would obviously cause addressing conflicts. Link above and below for a video about CIDR ranges if you need some help with that. And then on the peering connection, you also have to modify the route tables to allow traffic back and forth. For example, we're going to say that in one VPC, traffic destined for the other VPC should go to one peering connection and then vice versa. So these are basically a mirror of each other and they allow traffic going in both directions. So with that brief overview, here's what we're going to go build. I've got a default VPC, just like you do, that gets created when you create your AWS account. And then earlier, I created a second VPC called My First VPC. We're going to go launch an instance in each one of those. And we'll see that initially they can't talk to each other because they're in different VPCs. And then we're going to go set up the peering connection so that they can talk to each other. We're also going to have to update the route tables so that traffic can go both directions. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is launch an EC2 instance in each of the VPCs, just so we can see that communication is working or not initially. So I'll launch an instance here from the EC2 dashboard. The first instance is going to live in my first VPC. That's the custom one that I created. So I'll call it my instance in first VPC <laughs> very creatively. I'll go with defaults for everything up here, sticking with the free tier. I have a key pair that I created earlier, but then we do need to go modify the network settings. So I will edit here. And this one, rather than going to the default VPC, we want this to live in my first VPC, my custom one. And in that VPC, I had a public subnet and a private subnet. I want this to live in the public subnet. And just as a refresher, in case you need it, a public subnet is one that has a route out to an internet gateway so we can get to the outside world. And I set all of that up ahead of time. For security groups, let's create a new one down here. We want to allow HTTP traffic port 80 from anywhere. So this will just let us get to a web page on the server so we can verify that everything is working. And then the other thing I'm going to do is down here under advanced details, all the way down, we'll enter a script here. And this is just going to set up the web server and a simple hello world index.html page. And again, that's how we'll be able to hit the box and know that everything's working. So I'll launch that instance. And while that is spinning up, let's go launch a second instance in the default VPC. So launch instances. This one I'll call my instance in default VPC. Defaults for everything up here, free tier. I'll select the key pair that I had created earlier. And for this one, it's defaulting to the default VPC. So we can just leave that as is. For security groups, the one that we just created was called Launch Wizard 9. That might not fully be created yet to reuse though. Let me just check. 
There's some others here that I could reuse as well, but let's just create a new one. So we're sure that we have everything. We will allow HTTP traffic from the internet, just like we did on the other instance. And then down here under advanced details, just again entering that script so that we'll have a simple HTML page that we can use to test things out. So I'll launch that instance, get everything going. If I look at instances here, it looks like things are still spinning up. So I'll give it just a second to pause the video and be right back. All right, it looks like everything worked. Let's just do a quick sanity check here to make sure we can get to the web pages that we created on each instance. So I'll just copy the public IPv4 address here and open up a new tab. And I should get a hello world. That's perfect. So the one in my custom VPC is up and running. It looks good. Let's check the other one just to make sure. So same thing here in a new tab. And that looks good as well. So we know the instances are up and running. And obviously we can get to them from the internet, but that's not ultimately the thing that we need to check. We want to make sure that the instances can talk to each other, right, between the VPCs. The web pages are just there as a quick sanity check for us to know this stuff's working. So what I'm going to do is SSH into a machine, and then we will try to hit the other machine on its private IP address. So I'll select the instance in the default VPC and say connect. I'm just going to use EC2 instance connect here because it's super easy. We'll connect to this. Okay, we've got the command line there. And then what we want to do is say curl. The curl command will pull back the content of the index.html page from the server that we're trying to hit, which is the server in the custom VPC. So let's grab the IP address for that one. That was my instance in first VPC. And here we want to grab the private IP address. If communication is working across the VPCs, then they should be able to communicate on these private addresses. So I'll copy that. We'll paste it in. And some extra stuff here. <laughs> All right, so let's see what happens when we try to submit that. And spoiler alert, actually nothing is going to happen. It will hang for quite a while and eventually come back and say that it failed. And that's because the VPCs are not able to talk to each other. We haven't done that part yet. So let's go see how to get that working. We want to come into the VPC dashboard over here, and we need to set up a peering connection. So down here on the left, I have an old one here from when I was setting up this demo, but create a new peering connection. I'll call this my default to first VPC connection. And then there's going to be a requester VPC as well as an acceptor VPC. So requester will be my first VPC. That's the custom one. And then we select the VPC to peer with. Now I'm going to just use another VPC in my account, but you can go across accounts as well. And same for region. I'm currently in US West too, but this works across regions if you have that requirement. The acceptor is going to be default VPC. And we should be able to leave everything else the defaults and create peering connection. All right, the connection was created, but you'll see this message here, pending acceptance. And it's saying that we need to accept or reject this request. So VPC peering is kind of a big deal. You're really opening up the network so that others can access the resources in there. So it makes sense that the acceptor would have to say that, yes, this is OK. So we can do that from the Actions menu, Actions and Accept Request, and Accept. But we're still not quite done. Remember that we have to create routes between the two VPCs. Thinking back to our diagram, the purple route tables here. And back to the earlier slide, we need to specify the source, site or range, and the destination, and basically point to the peering connection that we just set up. And we have this handy message up top to let us easily do that, so modify the route tables now. And we're going to need to do this in two places. So let's first start with the default VPC route table. This should be here automatically for you. With that selected, come up to Actions, Edit Routes, 
And here we want to add a route. And we want to say any traffic trying to go to the CIDR range of my custom VPC should go to the peering connection. So here we're going to need the destination. I just happen to know it's 10.0.0.0 slash 16. But if you didn't know that though, you can come into your VPCs. I'll look at all of my VPCs here. And my first VPC here is that CIDR range. So that's where I was getting that from. But we're saying any traffic that's trying to go there should go to the peering connection. And once you select that, it should recognize the peering connection that we just set up. The only one there. And then we will save changes. And then we need to go through similar steps for our other route table. This one, my public route table, this is on my custom VPC that I set up ahead of time. So yours probably has a different name for your custom VPC that you set up. But same steps here, actions, edit routes. Here we want to add a route. And this one we're saying any traffic that's going to the CIDR range of the default VPC. So let's go check what that range is. Back here, the default VPC. This is our CIDR range right here. I'll just copy that. And it's slash 16. If traffic's trying to go there, we want to route it to the peering connection. And there again, it recognizes the name. And save. And then we should be good to go. Back to our diagram, we've set up the peering connection, we've updated the route tables. And so now the moment of truth. If we come back here to our command line and we try to curl again from one instance to the other, we should now get a response back, the hello world from our web page. Yay! Nice work. Now before you run away, let's go through and delete any resources if you are following along with me. So very importantly, let's get rid of our instances. So I'll just select both of these and I will terminate them. Depending on what else you're trying to do with your VPC and your route tables and so on, you may or may not want to delete those. I'm going to delete mine just to keep things clean and tidy here. I'll come back to peering connections. And I'll select that one that we just set up. Say actions and delete peering connection. And when you do that, you have the option to delete the related routes at the same time. I actually think that's a handy shortcut. I'm going to do that. If you need to keep them around for some reason, though, you can select the other option. We'll say delete. And if you had created a VPC just for practice, just to keep things tidy here, I'm actually going to delete mine. Actions and delete. And then I also had a route table and an internet gateway associated with mine, so I'm happy to blow those away as well. But again, depending on what you're doing, you might want to keep some of those around. And that does it. So that's how to set up VPC peering between two VPCs so they can essentially act as one network. I hope you found that helpful. If you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you so much for watching.